and uh, welcome to my talk on functions. Uh, functions are a kind of relation and uh, relations consist of functions but they also consist of non-functions. So either they're functions or they're not functions but either way they're relations. Now a relation can be nothing more than a collection of points or it can be a curve or something like that. A relation is any expression that shows some relationship between the variables which satisfy, satisfy the equation. Here are some examples. For this example, any real numbered values a, b, c, or d or is total as 99 are valid. One's choice of a value of a is affected by one's choice for b, c, or d. But you're still allowed many ways of making choices for any value of a. For a squared plus b squared equals 25, any real numbers chosen for a and b are okay so long as the sum of the squares is 25. As in the last example, a is restricted by b and b is restricted by a. For any value in a, there may be more than one choice of b and vice versa. For example, if a equals 3, then b can be 4 minus 4. Recall what squaring does to negative numbers. All right. On this side, we have non-functions. Now, the idea is that if I put in one x value into a non-function, I get at least one y value out. Now, it's, I was going to say one x value in, two or more y values out, which is also true. But it's not true all the time. So in certain parts of the domain, you might get one in and one out. But you're always going to, for these non-functions, you will always run into the problem that somewhere in the domain, you're going to get more than one y value out, somewhere in the domain. Here's an example, x equals y squared. Now, note the similarity over here. y equals x squared is a function. x equals y squared is not a function. To see this, you have to take a look at the graph. Now, before we do so, why don't we solve for y in terms of x, just like we did over here? If we solve for y in terms of x, we have to take the square root of both sides, making y equals plus or minus the square root of x. What that means is, if I stick in a value like 4 here, the square root of 4 is 2, and then I get plus 2 or minus 2. What that means is I get two answers for an x that I put in. This, this function, or this, this expression, I should not call it a function, but this expression is generating the numbers 2 and minus 2 if I substitute x equals 4. A function is not supposed to generate two answers. It's supposed to generate only one answer. 3a minus b equals 5. In this case, plugging in a number for a determines a value for b. For each a chosen, there can be only one and exactly one possible value for b. For example, if a is 1, then b is minus 2, such that the result will be 5. Dependent and independent variables. Dependent variables are variables which are related to something else. In order for dependent variables to change, something else has to change. We refer to that something else as the independent variable. Relations which use the concept of dependent and independent variables are called functions. But what distinguishes functions from non-functions? Well, let's take a look at a function to see what the rules are. So the rules are, if I stick in one x value into a function, if I substitute one value for x, I usually expect to get one value for y. And so an example would be y equals x squared. And from grade 10, you know that is a parabola. And it's a parabola that's symmetrical on both sides. Uh, the y-axis is the axis of symmetry, and so on. And you can see that if I put in a value of y, like, or sorry, a value of x, if I put in an, a value of x, like uh, 2, for example, I get the y value 4. Okay, so 2 squared equals 4. The independent variable is usually part of a formula, and the dependent variable is usually on its own. 
In a coordinate system, x is the independent variable, while y is the dependent variable. Examples of such functions include familiar equations, such as y equals 3x minus 2, y equals 2x squared plus 5x minus 1, y equals cosine x, or y equals the cube root of 2x minus 9, all plus 1. Functions and function notation. A property of functions is that the substitution of only one value for x leads to only one y value. In function notation, a symbol is often used to denote a function such as f. Any letter may be chosen. Sometimes even Greek letters are chosen. So instead of writing y equals x squared, it is customary to write f of x equals x squared. Any ideas as to why we might wish to write f of x instead of y? Well, y can stand for any relation at all, where f of x is only ever used for functions. The symbol f of x allows for changes in the notation to allow for substitution, as in f of 5 equals 25. Y notation does not have x for substitution, except in the expression. You generally can't say y of x if you also mean y is the dependent variable. f of 5 specifically means the result of the calculation when a 5 is substituted for the independent variable, usually x. So if f of x equals x squared, then f of 5 equals 5 squared equals 25. For x equals 5, a 5 is substituted for all x in the equation, and the calculation is performed as shown by the step f of 5 equals 5 squared equals 25. And so we end up with a parabola, and it's still a parabola, that looks like this. It's really this parabola turned on its side. As you can see, the, the idea of x equals 4 does generate a plus 2, and it generates a minus 2. Just like what x equals 1 generates a plus 1 and a minus 1. And x equals 9 generates a plus 3 and a minus 3. So this is not a function, even though it's a continuous curve and seems to be very similar to this. What it fails is something called the vertical line test. If I draw a vertical line anywhere in this non-function, I hit two parts of the function somewhere in the domain. If I hit two parts of the curve, then I can say it's not a function. If I try the same test on this graph, draw a vertical line down here like this, I only hit one part of the curve. If I only hit one part of the curve whenever I draw a vertical line, and it can go forever if I like, then what I have is a function. That proves that anywhere, everywhere in the domain, if I put in one x value, I always expect to get one y value. Over here for this non-function, if I put in one x value, then getting out a single y value is by no means guaranteed. Somewhere in the domain of this function, you will run into situations where you will get two or more answers. Some other functions you've seen in grade uh, 10, or you might have seen in grade 10, maybe you didn't, is this curious function, or not function, but relation. If you see a relation like this, x squared plus y squared equals 9, what this is is a circle of radius 3 centered at the origin. It looks something like this, right? The center's at the origin, the radius is 3. And each point on the circle is fulfilled by, each point on the circle can be plugged into here and here, and 9 will always be the result. This is also a non-function. If I draw a vertical line right through the circle like this, notice I hit two places. Now of course if I go, if I just graze the circle really close over on this side, uh, yes I do pass through one point, but what makes this a non-function is the fact that somewhere in this relation I can hit two points by drawing a vertical line. And of course, that's not on for a function. That's why we call it a non-function.